Hey guys, today we're going to meet up with Karin Tomlinson here at the Linney Studios in Lynn Hall. Karin. Hi. Hey, what are we getting into today? We are getting into pot roast. There's nothing like the smell of a good pot roast in the oven, I think. That smell hits you, it's almost like a warm hug you get. Exactly, like down to your soul. What are some of the first steps? We've got the chuck roast. I'm just gonna sear it with a tiny bit of oil, salt and pepper, super basic. What are some memories of this dish that you have? I grew up having it every time I'd go out to my grandparents' house in the town of Dassel, a little Swedish immigrant farm town in Minnesota. The way that my grandmother wrote the recipe years ago, she just called it her forgotten roast. Mm -hmm. And it's just an easy thing to throw in the oven. She used to make it before leaving for church. And then if my grandpa would want to invite people over, she would have a meal ready. So literally, you just keep it in a big piece. All the flavors kind of yeah. you know, uh, sit together throughout that whole time, cook it low and slow. Yeah. And I just think it's magical. You let the meat speak for itself. And I believe that when you leave it in that big piece, like yeah. you can't really overcook it, you know what I'm saying? Like It's very it, forgiving. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, definitely forgiving. I mean, you know, if you're 15 minutes off, it's like, hey. Oh, I've been like an hour off on this before <laughs> and it gets better. So yeah. yeah, as long as you cook it at the right temperature. This is my grandma's meat fork. I was just gonna say. Every like, chef needs a grandma meat fork. Uh, and when you're searing this, Karen, what are you what are you looking for? A really nice brown crust on mm -hmm. each side. Not worrying about um, cooking it, because of course it's going to cook in the oven. Yep. And this is like the part where you can go pour yourself a drink <laughs> or something, you know? Exactly. The pot roast that you do, is it pretty aligned with your grandma's recipe, or do you take some well, li like artistic liberties in there? I think it embodies the spirit, the essence of my mom's recipe and my <laughs> grandmother's. However, I don't use anything from a packet. Oh, OK. <laughs> Oh, that, that looks beautiful. I know that for a lot of people who make pot roasts, they just put it all in a pot like that. Yeah. And they don't get a sear. It's almost just a steaming, you know? Yeah, definitely different approaches. But the sear, yeah. I will I will die on that hill. <laughs> I'll die with you on that hill. All right, perfect. Yeah. We'll come down together. Yeah. All right, I'm going to cut the heat on this. Now we are going to get our aromatics ready, which is onion, garlic, and some mushrooms. So Karin, can you go into depth a little bit about how food was a part of your life growing up? Yeah, I saw as a young kid how food can really bring people together. My parents were hospitable, and same with my grandparents when I had spent time with them in Dassel. I just saw that that was a part of life, not only for them, but for everyone in the community. And if someone died, then you'd see someone walk across the back 40 with a casserole in their hand. I think it's that kind of farming community where I saw that really valued. It was really influential to me, and even the way that I cook and, and do hospitality. Awesome. The pan where mm -hmm. we seared off the beef. Yes. You got that beautiful fond in there. Yes, fond. Those brown, crusty bits in layman terms. So we're going to use these vegetables, and the moisture from the vegetables will help to start to release some of the fond. And I'm also going to throw in some herbs. I like using thyme. Okay. Um, I actually have a little bit of marjoram today, too. Okay. But just something to give it a bit of the green uh, flavor. And thyme is one of those things where it's a hard herb, mm -hmm. so it, it could take stewing and braising yes. and, you know, and what we're going to be doing is we could take it really well. Exactly, yes. Yep. And then it's like this little stick that you can easily remove. Yeah, it's, just... it's easy, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I like to put a splash of wine in this, but mm -hmm. in honor of my grandma, who the strongest thing she had in her house was NyQuil. Yeah. I just, <laughs> it's, so, it's good without it. Yeah. <laughs> now we can uh, peel some carrots. Sometimes growing up, my mom would give me an, a choice for what to make on my birthday. Pot roast, in my mind, it was like the fanciest, nicest meal. <laughs> and, um, but it just, it felt like family. That made it special to me. Oh, dang. You really nuzzled those in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you just go whole with the potatoes, huh? Whole potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Why use Yukon Gold? 
Well, it's not as big of a commitment as a russet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't add any more moisture in it or no. any more liquid in it. So no. like all the moisture from all the vegetables that that comes out, that becomes your gravy. That's, exactly. It's incredible. And it actually is really good to not have much airspace around it because mm -hmm. that will, then the vegetables will soak up the flavor. It'll be, it'll keep more moisture in. It won't just evaporate as it's cooking. You'd be surprised how many carrots you can fit in here. <laughs> Do one more. Right there. Now we put it in the oven and wait for about five or six hours until it's done. Rummy. Sweet! Oh. I think mine could have steeped a little longer. Cream? Oh, yes, please. Oh, look at these happy little trees. Wow, Karin, this looks delicious. Excited for you to try it. So awesome. I feel so American eating this. Could have just come from the fields. Yeah. Ready for a late lunch. Oh, this is so good, Karin. Mm, good. Especially on like a cold day right? like this. This is kind of a stick to your ribs. Not even kind of, it is a stick it's to your ribs meal. <laughs> 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 My grandfather would pray and he would leave so many pauses between sentences that we'd wonder if he was like falling asleep. <laughs> and there's like this delicious food on the table. I'm like. <laughs>